Yo, what's up everybody? It's me, Zach, and we're back here at the Rare Candy YouTube channel. So, for all of you who might have been watching the channel and been like, yo, where's Zach recently? I just came back from traveling from Richmond, Virginia, to Portland, Oregon, to Sao Paulo in Brazil, playing Pokemon, that is. Um, and I'm super stoked to come back here to make a video today. I did pretty okay in the tournaments, finished off with a top 16 in North America standing at the end of those events. So that means I will be going to Melbourne, Australia in February. So that's going to be my fourth time in Australia playing Pokemon there. So if there's any uh, fans from out there in that region, it's, it's going to be exciting to meet all of you. I will be on my way there. So one of the decks that I saw during my travels was Manuel Jorark. He's a player from uh, Europe. And he travels to some North American events. A lot of players know who he is. And he had this Baby Blounds deck. So I've actually played Baby Blounds in the past. We saw um, Jeff Chris. He played this at a regionals, came ninth place. And in the only other regionals that came uh, was standard, were actually, was there was no other standard regionals that it was played at. It was played at LAIC and it came ninth and top 16th. So that's making me think that Baby Blue Cephalon is, it's one of those decks that's fallen under the radar. It was played last season, but there was better decks than it last season, and that's a guarantee. Um, but it did also make top eight at uh, NAIC, so you want to know what? Maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe Blacephalon, Baby Blacephalon was always just kind of shadowed by every other deck. Um, it seems like it's a ghosted uh, deck in general, where it's just like, it's always been good. If we look at uh, Fireball Circus, we have a semi-unlimited damage cap, and it runs off of a Welder engine and we have a single prize card Pokemon. So I think that this is actually a solid deck going forward. It's absolutely one of my top picks going um, forward to uh, Daytona regionals and uh, San Diego regionals and any league challenge or league cup. Unfortunately, I played this at a league challenge very recently, um, hit some awful matchups um, and some very poor starts. So it's one of those things where League Challenges are a whole different metagame, but on a worldwide metagame, I think Baby Blounds is absolutely a cool deck. Very good in best of three. Better in best of three than best of one because this deck can be a little inconsistent at times. But I have changed up Manual's uh, list a little bit. So let's jump into this deck profile, see exactly what everything does. There's like literally only 20 different cards in this deck or something like that. For, uh, less than that, I think it's 17. So it's going to be a quick deck profile, and then we'll jump into a couple games so you can see exactly what this deck can do. So Pidgey is a card, and actually before I start this off, um, I do want to uh, cut one Pidgey for the other Pidgey. Um, that's a mistake that I quite often make. So we got Pidgey. We should be playing one of the Collect Pidgey. The only reason why we don't play all of the Collect Pidgeys is because it has... 50 HP in comparison to the 60 HP. Um, and that's just because your opponent can knock it out with like an Espeon Deoxys for three energies, knocking out two. Um, it might not matter too much with the new baby Psychic Blounds if that becomes popular at all, but as for right now, that's probably a fair split. And as you can probably see in this video, PTC Geo is acting up and it's not showing any of the numbers. So at the end, I just have to kind of figures itself out after a few times of me uh, clicking up and down here. There you go. See, it's like magic. Okay, so before PTCGO decides to act up or anything like that, feel free to take a screenshot right here of this list. It's really nothing major from what um, we saw at LAIC or what we've seen in the past. The deck is very much the same with a handful of different cards that are slashed and maybe like five cards at absolute tops different. But jumping back, so we got the Pidgeys. Pidgeys aren't going to really do anything. The Quick Attack one is actually pretty cool. I actually might argue that the Quick Attack one, I might change it back actually more and more than I think about it. Because there's a lot of Pokemon with 170 HP or 160 HP. Quick Attack can do 10 damage to them. And then you could Fireball Circus them for the remainder because it goes in increments of 50 damage. It adds up kind of nice. Um, however, if you are a Chronic Dead Drawer like your boy Zack... Uh, collect can save your butt and it's one of those things where it's like oh I could collect into a professor elm so I don't actually lose this game or oh yo I could collect into a fire crystal so I could win the game the next turn um, most games if you're attacking with collect you're probably not in a great spot but there's been countless games where it's just like I'll use Colrus for one or tropical beach for one and then you get the game changing card 
or you could just top deck out of nowhere. I'm sure we've all played a game where we have thought we were going to win a game and then we lost a game and vice versa where we thought we were going to lose a game and then we suddenly win a game. So um, Pidgeotto is going to be the main draw engine of our deck. I've thought about running other things other than Pidgeotto. We have the new Saws back from the set, but I think Pidgeotto is just best because it works with Professor Elm's Lecture. And as long as we have Professor Elm's Lecture in our format, Pidgeotto is probably not going to have a better companion card. And that makes Pidgeotto better than most other draw cards because it's not discarding cards. It's just straight drawing cards. So it's pretty cool. Um, so you could look at the top two cards, grab one, put the other one on the bottom of your deck. So not discarding anything grabbing whatever you need per turn and then getting set up you want to get multiple Pidgeotto set up quite often i'm getting out three four Pidgeottos in a game one blacephalon and then one either lily's polka doll or jirachi on my bench then we got blacephalon so this is my go-to pokemon not this specific card this is my go-to card word what up shout out blounds last season yeah anyways so Two really cool attacks. It's an Ultra Beast, so it's running off of the whole B-Strings, off of the whole Ultra Space. We don't play B-String in this deck, but it can run it, so it is a possible tech. I have thought about it, and you might want to think about it too. It's something that I'm actually heavily considering in this deck. Um, Blazer, so Blazer is a great way to turn Pidgey, Jirachi, any Pokemon that is weak to fire, um, or any Pokemon that has 60 HP or less into a snack. You have a lot of fire energies in this deck 14 so a big strategy that i like to do is on my first turn look through my deck peek through see exactly how many fire energies i have prized so let's say if you have four energies prized out of uh, your six prize cards so that gives you approximately a 67 percent chance of hitting with blazer just by flipping now i always use blazer in order because i don't want to look sketchy at all um in fun testing games i will flip my prize cards at random i think you just should go from the bottom left or the bottom right and go all the way to the top. Um, but obviously it does give you information about your prize cards. It can be a solid attack and you can win games off of it. Fireball Circus, you could quickly power up whatever you want um, or quickly power it up however which way you want. So two energies and one energy or keep it on your bench, chilling behind a Lily's polka doll. Um, and then you can go right into Fireball Circus, absolutely destroying whatever Pokemon your opponent has in the active position. You can knock out an Arceus Dalga Palkia GX, one of those huge tag teams for only six energies. Mewtwo Mew, six energies. So you're drawing three prize cards and you're a single prize card Pokemon. Not too many other Pokemon can hit for 300 damage in the format. And we're talking like Charizard GX from Hidden Fates uh, or the promo. We're talking Reshram and Charizard GX beyond that it's basically only fire type pokemon if you think about it um but it's one of those things where it's going to be incredibly difficult for any other deck to hit that type of damage cap this deck has a super high damage cap the only payback or the only drawback to this deck is that it is a little inconsistent at times and i do want to stress that play around with this deck see if it's your play style if you are going to be attending daytona regionals or any event going forward make sure that you do kind of agree with that to yourself in writing because I know at the League Challenge that I played in yesterday, I was like, man, oh man, what am I doing? But I've also taken this deck to a top 32 finish at Origins last year and a top 128 finish at NAIC. Um, Blacephalon GX is a card that I did add into this deck. It's really only for Burst GX at the end. So if you're playing against an ADP deck, for example, you go um, Fireball Circus on an ADP. You go Fireball Circus on a Caldeo GX. And then you burst GX for game. This deck doesn't have a GX attack otherwise. Um, if you look at everything, there's no way to use a GX attack. It does give you a sixth attacker. So I just think it's kind of not necessary, but I've been liking it so far in my testing. I've seen burst GX win more often than not. I usually use this for my last prize card because I don't want to give my opponent the benefit of two prize cards. We have Victini Prism Star, so once Fireball Circus has depleted a whole bunch of energies, we can get the, all the energies back and do a lot of damage. Um, considering the attack takes two energies in general, we can do upwards of 240 damage, but it's a great way to knock out something like a Dedenne GX or a Keldeo GX, Rayquaza GX, Blacephalon GX, a lot of the cards that just did well at the only Cosmic Eclipse standard event we had, LAIC. 
you can knock out with infinity and then we got a couple copies of Jirachi. I know some lists like to play uh, three or four copies of this card. For me, I'm actually pretty happy with just running two. Um, it's not a card that I'm expecting to start with. I usually start with other cards. Um, if I'm not running two, I'm probably going to be running four and adding a couple more switches into this deck. But that's going to change the whole dynamics of the deck anyways. Um, if you check through my Twitter at Zlasage Pokemon... I do have Blacephalon, baby Blacephalon lists that do play four Jirachis that I played to decent success at Cups last quarter. Um, this is just to make our deck a little bit more consistent while we're searching for enough uh, energy cards to kind of knock things out with Fireball Circus. And you might be thinking like, yo, you can't grab energy cards, but you can grab Fiery Flints, Fire Crystals. I think those cards are, they're more or less the same in the sense of this deck. So we'll just kind of speed through these trainers because a lot of it's really basic. So this is discard cards, grab four fires. Four fires is a great amount of fodder that we could be doing damage with uh, Fireball Circus. That's all cool. Fire Crystal, getting them back from our discard pile. Um, great catcher. So we could bring up one of our opponent's Pokemon, GX, considering there's no EX Pokemon in this format. At the cost of discarding two, not bad, especially when there's three prize card Pokemon in format. Um, Lily's Pokedoll, I think it's kind of a stroke of genius that I saw on that list from LAIC. So decks aren't really playing custom catcher unless they're playing maybe a green stack. But if they're playing a green stack, they're probably playing three prize card Pokemon. So that's step one. Step two is um, the only other way to really bring things up in this Guzma less format is your opponent using uh, Ninetales to gust up something if they're playing. Uh, ability zard and that's already a pretty favorable matchup for this deck so in both cases lily's poke doll doesn't really matter in those matchups but if you're playing against something like adp and you have a bit of a slow start you can send up poke doll have another poke doll on their bench so when they try to go fion or fione and swap their pokemon you could just send up lily's poke doll again they can't get any way around it so they're just forced to take a knockout on a lily's poke doll counts as zero prize cards and then they're back to the next thing. If you stumble again, Lily's poke it all it up again. So it does give you kind of a little bit of time to set up while your opponent struggles to get the Lily's poke it all out of the active position. I think it's pretty cool. Lily's poke doll is going to be an amazing card this format. It's I don't know if it's reached its peak yet, but I would probably pick up a copy of this card for sure. Um, I would pick up a place out of this card for sure. I think it's a good card to have on at all times because it can seemingly fit into any deck and it's great to help you set up. Palpats, what's up next? Uh, a lot of baby bonds lists don't play this. I actually really like this because um, you'll run out of welders, especially with your six attackers that you have. Um, they might just knock out a Pokemon and you're like, oh, cool, I didn't have a Welder. Or, oh, cool, I was forced to Welder out of uh, necessity to try to draw some more cards. As this deck, as I said, can be inconsistent, you will struggle at times. So we got Palpad there, get some stuff back, Pokegear, making the deck more consistent. Ultra Space, you could search out Baby Blounds or Big Blounds. Um, this deck used to play Heat Factory. Kind of got cheesed when I was playing against uh, Chaotic Swell. So I ended up cutting it for one of the additions that I have different in this deck than uh, the ninth place list at LAIC. Um, Ultra Space is a card that I, I'm constantly trying to find a cut for, um, see if there's a better option. We just don't have great ball search or item search in this format to search out Blacephalon. So treat that for what it's worth. Professor Elm's Lecture, like I said, we could search our deck for Pidgeys, Pidgeotos. This allows us to get set up real quick. Welder, what's their need? What do I need to say about Welder that hasn't been said in thousands of videos online? This card's absolutely busted. Attaching two fire energies is insane. Draw three cards. It, you can't get a better supporter card than this unless it was like attach four energies and draw five cards or six cards. Like Welder is busted. Welder would still be played in decks. Fire decks would still do well, or decks that had fire energies, even if this was a Prism Star card, so keep that in mind. A skateboard. Uh, this is really for Jirachi, but I sometimes attach it to my birds. Do not attach it to Lily's Pokedoll, because Lily's Pokedoll cannot retreat. It doesn't have a retreat cost. It cannot retreat. And last but not least, we got Fires. 14 seems like the suffice amount of numbers to hit with Fireball Circus and with Victini. So this is what we got for 
this deck profile. We're going to be playing some games uh, right after this. And you want to know what? Um, shout out to one of our sponsors, PTCGO Store. They We actually have a special discount code, Rare Candy, all caps, R-A-R-E-C-A-N-D-Y. You should probably know if you're watching this video because we got all the nice little graphics that say Rare Candy around. Um, so you could save some off your order when you're getting some PTCGO uh, code cards. So really check out their site, ptcgostore.com. Um, they got a great selection of stuff. I know that I've personally picked up some stuff from there. They've helped me out a lot as a player, so maybe they could help you out as a player as well. So shout out to them. Thank you so much for supporting us, guys. And we really hope that you enjoy our content. So let's jump into this deck profile and see exactly how it goes. Or not deck profile. We're going to play some games on PTCGO. You can tell that I haven't made one of these videos in a while, so stay with me, folks. I'm just having fun with it. Okay, cool. Against the Schnips. What's up, the Schnips? If you're watching this video, shout out to you. Call him a coin flip, and we lost the flip. That kind of sucks for us because our deck likes going first. We're not really attacking on our first turn, or we're rarely attacking on our first turn. So let's see um, if they're going to let us go first. Nope, they're going to go first. You can see by the little stars that we got around PTCGO. This hand, uh, so kind of as I was saying in the deck profile video, you can see that uh, this hand's looking a little uh, risque. It's uh, difficult here. and But maybe our opponent's playing some grass type deck or something with their Bulbasaur sleeves on. So let's see how this uh, works out. So we got a Marshadow. And uh, okay, it looks like they're gonna be playing Mewtwo Mew. At least I can assume so with the Hapu. Hopefully they discard a whole bunch of good stuff. Oh wow. Mewtwo Mew with Power Plants? It's an interesting card. Um, emphasis on interesting. So we got Mewtwo Mew, got a Psychic Energy there. They're gonna switch. And we'll see exactly. I've, I've actually never seen this deck play a Power Plant. So, um, Power Plant's not very great in this deck because they have uh, Perfection that's going to be able to shut off their own ability. And now they've got a Lysander Labs in here, so that's going to shut off Pokemon Tools. So that's not going to really help us out with a Skateboard, but we do have Ultra Space in play, so my plan right now is to Escapeboard Pidgey, Ultra Space, Retreat, and Tubal Cephalon Attack with Blazer. I think that seems about the best I can do. So let's go that. Let's go Blacephalon. I could have gone for Blacephalon GX, and I probably should have checked through my prize cards there. But this hand's so disgusting that I'm just getting tunnel visioned. So let's go there. And uh, big Blazer. Let's see what we can flip over. Let's hit this Mewtwo Mew for more than 10 damage. 60 damage there. Let's go. So we just need to uh, power up this Blacephalon next turn, and then discard five from our hands. And that sounds busted. So they got a Nag GX, and our opponent could potentially snipe the Nag GX. Okay, they're just putting it back into their deck. Maybe they're gonna grab a, oh, just Sogaleo GX that does not get Blacephalon. Rush Ram and Charizard GX. So our plan right now, until our opponent puts down another tag team Pokemon, is to go knock out Mewtwo and Mew GX, period. Knock out Dedenne GX, period. And then go Burst GX for game. That's our easiest path to victory. So we're already kind of on our way there. Maybe our opponent's going to struggle to find some energies. They did discard um, five energies, and their deck doesn't play that many, so... We'll see how it goes. So there's Mewtwo Mew GX. There's another energy. And they got a Welder. So now our plan might change, but we're going to probably try to knock out two Mewtwo Mew GXs. They're probably going to power up that Mewtwo Mew GX on the bench with Solgaleo GX's Turbo Strike. So doing 120 and putting two energies onto their bench Pokemon. Okay, well, we do have another Ultra Space in our hand, so joke's on that. And we can use Airmail this upcoming turn. 
The biggest thing that I'm scared about is if our opponent's able to get off Espeon Deoxys attack and knock out both of our Pokemon at once. And that does seem like it's a possibility. Okay, so in order of proper operation proper operations, we're gonna go for this right here. We want to search out a baby Blacephalon. Now, normally I would go Pokegear first, so I have a higher chance of getting Pidgeotto, but we're not set up. So let's go for Airmail first, so we have a higher chance of hitting a Stadium, or a Supporter. There's another Fire Energy. And let's see what we get off this Pokegear. Um, I want to go with... I think we gotta go with Professor Elm's lecture here. It's really unfortunate, but it's the best that we could absolutely do. I'm just gonna go one, two, three, like that. We're gonna feed them a burb. We're just gonna pass. Um, so you can see that this is a d difficult setup. Like, what am I to do? Put a Blacephalon up active? and then go Welder to it. Sure, I would have drawn three cards, but what if those three cards didn't contain another basic Pokemon? It was very possible that we could have lost the game. <laughs> so now for sure, even if they take out our best two Pokemon, a Blacephalon and a Pidgeotto, we might be able to rebound, rebound a little bit. But it's, it's looking like it's a tough game right here. Um, if this was a tournament, I'd probably be calling it quits on this game relatively soon, if not already. Okay, so there's a fire energy. If our opponent doesn't have Welder, then they're probably not going to be attacking um, our Pokemon like crazy. They're just going Turbo Strike, so that works out fantastic for us. Um, we're in a better position than we were last turn, because we have a whole other Pidgeotto line set up. So let's see how it plays out. And we top deck a welder. Okay. So let's go Blacephalon there. Let's go Airmail first. Draw Cheese, a pretty good card for us to grab here. Better than a Great Catcher is because we're probably not going to be taking the knockout. Let's go like that. Let's, uh, how many energies do we have in our discard pile? One. We'll just thin out our deck a little bit more because I want to save on that welder. Lily's Polka Doll, that can definitely go down on our bench. Keep that fire energy in our hand, and we're gonna pass. So our opponent can't knock out both baby little cephalons. They can knock out Jirachi Pidgeotto Pidgeotto. Um, honestly, if I were our opponent, I'd be knocking out those three and then putting ourselves themselves into a checkmate situation. Um, I'm assuming our opponent's not going to do that, though. So, we'll see how it goes. Our our start here has been pretty horrendous, so we're trying at our best. There's a fire energy. If you just retreat, you'll win the game. A knockout, knockout, knockout. Yeah. So our opponent's gonna go for that. They're gonna knock out the Jirachi, knock out Pidgeotto, Pidgeotto. Or at least they should. If they knock out something wrong like Jirachi and Lecephalon, then we might be in business here, but I would be knocking out Jirachi, Pidgeotto, Pidgeotto real time. Yeah. So we'll give our opponent well played. That's it for this game. I know that we, ah, you wanna, let's see if we could uh, get the knockout. Let's see what we can do here. So we'll send up 
big bull cephalon. Search through our prize cards. There's a bull cephalon. GX. Fire crystal. Will we find fiery flints? Fiery flints. And then insert other card here. Or fiery flint and two fires. I'm feeling like we will not. We did get a fiery flint. And that is not enough for this deck. So, unfortunate. Good game, sir. That is that. We will, uh, we'll let them just take the knockout. Turbo Strike. Okay, we tried six prize cards. This is uh, me and my challenge in a nutshell. But uh, let's jump into the next one, see what's up with that. Fire Psychic Metal Colorless. I feel like that might be. Honestly, don't know. This starts much better for us than last game. Um, hopefully, our opponent doesn't do anything with their hand to take it away. Okay, let's see what's up there. Great Catcher, Reset Stamp, Power Plant, Choice Helmet, Fire, Fire. No clue what any of these things are for. Go Victini, Jirachi. We go second again, but that's fine. Wonder what our opponent's gonna be playing. Unidentified fossil. Huh. Okay, this is a great opportunity for us to knock out. Uh, that's tempting. Uh, I think we still go for the setup, but I can try for plays here. Let's go through here, see what's prized. We see that we prize none of our birds. We prize a fiery flint, a fire crystal, that's two. We prize a lily polka doll, that's three. Welder, that's four. Can't tell. Some numbers are kind of a uh, little out there on PTCGO. So that's fine. We're going to grab a Blasaphalon. We're going to go for Professor Alm's lecture. We're going to go bird. Bird. You wanna let's go for another bird. I feel like we have good chances to get another Professor Elms next turn. So there's that, there's that, there's that. Let's give them that. Let's see exactly how Blazer wants to go. I know we're not getting the knocker because we didn't prize any fires. So there's 20 damage. So we'll see what our opponent does. I might have wanted to try to add a Beast Energy Prism Star on this deck, so just when I go Blazer turn one, you can automatically take the knockout against Jirachi or like uh, Flabebe or something like that. That might be cute. Their opponent's chilling here right now. I don't know if they're thinking of uh, a grand strategy or if they're like, yo, what's up? Totally taking half a second here. Okay, I guess uh, they just ended their turn. Maybe they left their desk. Let's do this. Let's do everything in the proper order so we can try to get off... Uh, so let's go Poke Gear. Let's try to take the knock hit this turn. Uh, but we did get the elms. 
If we get one fire, we just knock out this Jirachi. I don't think our opponent's even at the game right now. Um, based off their last turn, either that or they just forgot. Wow. Okay, we got a bird at least. We could still maybe get it. Do, 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 do. Um, let's grab a Poke Gear. That sounds cool. Come on, fire energy or something. Double fire energy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's obtain this fire bread. I'm going to play Poke Gear just in case this evolves into an Omastar next turn. Uh, nothing there anyways. No harm, no foul. Let's go Fireball Circus for a single energy. And knock out this Jirachi. Now, we probably don't want the Lily's Poke at all, so let's randomly grab one of these prize cards. That one. Fire Crystal, that's a sweet prize. Yeah, I think our opponent literally just ran out of time, or maybe they just thought, I don't know, maybe they just saw the Baby Blacephalon and uh, realized that they can't win. But uh, we take those. Water, Dark, Metal. I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be uh, ADP. Probably with an Absol Tech. But I might be wrong there, we'll see. Again, really, really awkward start. Like, what am I supposed to do um, with this? But we'll see. And we're going second for the third game in a row. So a little bit of PTT Geo variance there. So, there's a Water Energy. We can't win the game this turn. That's fine, we'll just get out a bunch of Pidgeys. Okay, Lucario on that metal. This looks like uh, the list that probably made, I believe it was top four. Our opponent might think that we're playing Pidgeotto. Weird that they just passed there. One. And uh, I guess we prized... Uh, <laughs> I guess we prized two Pidgeys there. I'm just going to go for the attack at this point because that seems better than not. Sure, so now we only need to do 270 damage. If we get a heads next turn, maybe it will uh, work out. Even though I'm probably just gonna use air mail. <laughs> oh wow, they got they're they're struggling here. Um, okay, so let's go Pidgeotto. Let's go air mail. Okay, okay. I got a welder. Word up. Let's see what this uh, airmail wants to do for us. Got another welder. So I'm actually going to welder over to my active. Because I do want to gust them to bring them below the 250 HP threshold. So it does give us a pretty decent chance of winning the game next turn. Just trying to think if there's a better way. Um, let's go Jirachi. Let's go... I'm actually going to retreat now and more that I think about it. I'm just trying to thin out of the deck to try to get a better chance of getting like an Ultra Space. No dice there, but maybe next turn we'll be able to get it. Uh, let's go ahead and pass. Hopefully our opponent passes as well. Power plants. Yeah, our opponent's just gonna concede because they think that we're gonna get set up. Fire colorless metal. That is probably Robin Shaw's abilities art list. Okay, this is uh scary, but not as scary as other games have looked. What's up, Brett G1993? I like how your name has a nice ring to it, tone to it, so. If you're watching this video, be sure to holla. Since we're going uh, second for the fourth game in a row, I figured I might as well bench this Pokemon. 
Okay, so our opponent reset stamps us. Okay. Volcarona? I'm not sure, honestly. I'm assuming they probably play the new um, Savali. Maybe they play a copy of the older one from Ultra Prism. But. Nothing in the prize cards gives a hint away. We'll gladly take the giant hearth from our opponent. This is Savali. Maybe they're just scouting another Pokemon. Um, Jirachi, maybe? Nope, I was right. It's going to be Volcarona Silvalli. So I know that we featured a deck on this channel. They're just going to try to use it um, to ping for 10 or to, for 20 damage a few times. Grab back their energies. Seems like it's going to be a weird matchup, though. Oh, and their start's not as bad as we thought it would be. Just depends if we can get set up here, because... The game plan here is to use Giant Hurt to thin out the deck to Fire Energy cards, look through our prize cards, then go in with the Stellar Wish with the hopes of getting set up. Professor Elms would be much better here. If we top deck a Lily's Polka Doll, that would also be okay. Okay, so we top deck a Blacephalon. Let's pitch this fire away. Grab one, two. Dollar wish. Uh, there's a Professor Elms. That's not bad. Okay, so we're just going to go like that. Bird, bird, that. Probably should have checked through the prize cards again. Um, getting a little lazy here. I'm going to sacrifice a Blacephalon in this matchup. I, I kind of want them to knock it out. Because Silvalli has 210 HP. I'm gonna hit them with Blazer to at least do the 10. But we're gonna hit them for 60 anyways, so that's just golden. So what a fire under their butt. Let's see what goes on next turn. We got the Pidgeotto. So now they have we only need to discard three energies to knock them out. They do have this juicy GX attack though. Um Silver Knight GX, they can knock out an Ultra Beast. Just, whew, it's like a, a, a Lola Ninetales GX. And they play Professor Oak's setup. Let's see. Brave buddies, so they're just not going to use the check attack. That's fine. We can go ahead and use Jirachi. Okay, top deck another bird. That's fine. Let's go. We're searching for our boy uh, Welder here, or shall we say our girl? Because Welder is both. Um, let's go for air, air mail right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, our opponent can't get past that. They can snipe past it, but not enough to get a knockout. Let's see this, this, this airmail again. Probably just take another fire energy. Okay. I think that's definitely enough for us to get the knockout here, so we're going to go for it. Okay, and we still need fire crystals, so let's grab it back. One, two, three. 
just in case our opponent like resets stamps us or something. Let's put a Lily's Polka Doll down. Could always hide around that next turn. Let's go Fireball Circus for one, two, three. Hopefully our opponent doesn't get uh, a big setup off this. Hopefully we can get some good stuff. We don't want Fire Energy at this point. Pidgey, we'll take that. Pidgeotto, okay. This is good. Okay, our opponent plays Malolana. That's that's kind of an interesting card to play in a deck like this. Just because their Pokemon don't have a lot of HP. What are they gonna get here? Okay, they did get a Cherish Ball. So, oh, for Volcarona. Interesting. Volcarona, 210 HP, can definitely knock us out if they get an Energy. Ah, and they have the Silvalli as well. There's a Ditto. Good stuff. This is where they're gonna start doing the 20s, got it. Drawing a card. Another Volcarona. Yikes, I don't want them to knock out all of our Pidgeotos. But they're probably gonna be two, 20 to the same Pidgeotto. This is where their deck can start catching up. This is why Volcarona is a very good card. So let's send up Jirachi. See what we could do here. Grab a couple more fires. Let's see what airmail brings us. We don't have that many more knockouts to take, so we're in an okay spot. Still have our Bolcephalons. So we've used airmail one. Let's just take it, I guess. Airmail two. Airmail three. Cephalon Welder. We need to get four energies here. So we have one, two, three, four. We need to get one more. And that's how it's done. Um, okay, Fiery Flint, let's discard a Pokegear and how many fires do we have in there? Seven. Let's go uh, Pokegear and Ultra Space. Just want to make sure that we have enough at all times. So there's our three energies. We got enough to get the attack off. We have two others in our discard pile. So let's go 
pal pad, get both of our welders back into our deck. Because that's definitely a hot card you want next turn. Let's retreat into the Lily's Polka Doll because I want to put that Pidgey down in our hand onto the bench. So put that at the bottom of our deck. And Fireball Circus. One, two, three, four, five. Um, probably don't need the fire energies as much as we want. Let's grab that. Fire crystal is definitely better. So, their last attacker is going to be um, this Volcarona. They're going to be knocking out a Pidgeotto this turn, and they're going to be knocking out a Blissafalon this turn. Or at least they should be. Okay, Giant Hearth, if anything, is good for us, so we can get more energies in our discard pile. We need to have 11 in our discard pile and knock this out with a Victini. We've only played two Fire Crystals, so... I really hope that we could uh, get a knockout here on Volcarona next turn. That's that's the big game plan. So there's a Pidgeotto knockout, easy. That's fine. That's why we put this other Pidgey down so that we're set up on that. And they should be knocking out our Blissafalon here with uh, Backfire. Probably just gonna put it on Pidgey or Pidgeotto. And there's the backfire knockout. Okay, there's Jirachi. So we got plus F1 first and foremost. That's very good. Let's go for Pogegear will rip a welder. But the issue that we're gonna have is that we only have um, the one energy that we have in our hands, fire crystal, and then we have one more fire crystal. So that means that we have access to seven energies and we need to have eight energies to knock out a Volcarona. So that's just not gonna happen with Blissafalon. So we need to try to get the knockout with um, Victini here. So let's go for airmail number one. We're actually like literally just a Victini away from getting this. So in order for us to have a higher chance of getting Victini, we're gonna actually go Stellar Wish. Actually, what do they have on their bench? They have a Dedenne there. I think we just got it. Oh no, we still need to get a great catcher next turn. Okay, well, we'll go with, uh... there's less fire crystals in the deck. Then there are great catchers. There's a Lily's Polka Doll so that we can sacrifice one less prize card. And there is an escape board. I'm gonna take my chances here. Because we know great catchers are at the bottom of the deck. So let's just discard this. Double check to see exactly what we have. Two great catchers. Yep. So let's just go welder one, two.
put poke doll down. I wish we could just use Blissep 1. We actually might be able to use Blissep 1 next turn to win the game. Okay, and we just have to hope that our opponent doesn't have it. Cause so they can knock out a Pidgeotto in one go. They can, yeah, they can't win the game this turn currently with what they have. So I think we're good for next turn. Because our opponent's probably just going to hit the Pidgeotto or they're going to try to hit Lily's Poke at all. Um, they're going to be like 20 damage short of, uh, see, so now they only have 20 damage left that they could do. They're 10 damage short of knocking this out so that they could take a prize card um, with one of my other Pokemon. So maybe they play like Fion or Fiona or something like that and they'll end up winning the game. <coughs> or maybe they don't even have Welder. They've used two of them so far. That makes sense. Just in case I miss the next turn. Uh, solid play on their behalf because now we need to get everything out of our deck we need to get great catcher and we need to um i think we actually have guaranteed wins still because we're going to draw a card for our turn one from pidgeotto putting us at nine one at pidgeotto putting us at eight three from welder putting us at five and then jirachi can grab us the great catcher so unless our opponent reset stamps us, we win the game. But our opponent played um, super well this game. I honestly think they played super well, so. Good stuff on them. Okay, cool. So let's see exactly how this goes. Um, there's a Lily's Poke doll. So next things, um, in order for us to do everything, we need to go airmail here. Let's grab Welder. That's fine. Airmail again. That's also fine. So you can see we're now at eight cards. Now, our good catcher's for sure in our deck, and we only need four energies to knock out that Dedenne. So let's go Welder here. So you can see how we grab the great catcher, but it doesn't matter because we go Lily's Poke Doll at the bottom of the deck, which doesn't count as retreating. Send up Jirachi, and there's definitely going to be a great catcher in here. So you can see that we would have grabbed it anyways, because Lily's Poke Doll is at the bottom of our deck. It's our sixth card. So we have great catcher there. That's fine. Opponent probably doesn't realize that they haven't done any yet. Fire Crystal. So now we have the four energies, three energies there. Yeah. So, yeah, that game worked out really well. Yeah, so that's it for this video, everyone. Uh, totally appreciate you all watching it this far. You saw that uh, we had some weird variants where it's just like, I think we won the last three games. Game one was completely gross. Games two and three were also gross, but our opponent had it worse. Game four was probably the only game that worked out in our favor um, throughout the game, but really, really showcased how the deck works and fighting through the inconsistencies that are within it. So this is your one last opportunity to check out the list. We should have screenshot it right there. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed watching this video. If you have any comments, be sure to leave them down below. Any feedback, um, future content you want to see, anything like that, it's all good to go down there. Remember to uh, like and subscribe and share with all your friends. And if you're going to want to try to support our channel a little bit more, you can go to patreon.com 
slash RareCandyTCG. We do have some exclusive content on there. So you could become a Patreon. It would be really helpful towards our channel. And if you can't, by no means, we totally understand. If you can, that'd be amazing. It all goes towards making our channel the absolutely best that we can make it. Also, if you're looking for any cool Rare Candy swag, you can go to rarecandytcg.com, pick up some cool merch stuff. Really, again, it helps support our channel. And for me, I'm Zach Lesage. Uh, you could follow me on my Twitter at Zlesage Pokemon to follow me as I travel around. Beyond that, I will have more content either coming out this week or next week. Be sure to stay tuned for all of that and for the rest of the videos from everyone else on the channel. As for me, I gotta run, but thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great one.